So this LeWitt project is, frankly came about when Ted Snyder, the dean, uh, knowing that Norman Foster himself collects and loves Saul LeWitt's work, asked me at the art gallery, uh, knowing that the art gallery is receiving the, the uh, wall drawing archives of Saul's work and over 40 of his wall drawings as a gift from his estate, if we had something that could be uh, placed in this building, then we ended up with three wonderful wall drawings. So conceptually, it's important to understand that these can be done at different sites and each site is somewhat different in the way the work feels and how it'll be received and, 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 and interpreted by people who live with it or study with it. And all that we do is work from Saul's original diagrams, generally without scale indicated other than proportion, so not necessarily height with length. And in Saul's case, the integrity of the work was always the initial proportions, so we knew what the constraints would be. Taking that diagram, it gets rescaled to the actual measurements of the wall, drew a grid, measured it out, drew it out in pencil, and then proceeded with the either material and the process that each of the different drawings require. A lot of the building is more monochromatic in its whites and gray steels and, and other colors, so we particularly pick some pieces that really pump the color up and that you really see them from afar as fields of color, and then as you get closer to them, they of course appear in much greater detail. He always worked very with very simple plane geometry, uh, generally a lot of things that were generated, forms that were generated out of a cube, uh, square, circle, triangle, working with very basic elements. So this piece is a truncated pyramid, essentially. And it's still all generated out of a cube, and it's simply different points within that, that square. Coming to it with a very simple, systematic approach to how color is created. It's additive color. The colors are combinations of red, yellow, blue, and gray. Non-emotional, non-judgmental colors, simply a palette that he chose to work with. Was, this is my system. These are the colors that arrive. I, he trusted his own vision of that work. In, the, in selecting the two pieces that went in on the first floor, one of them is, is in the lounge area where the students and faculty will be hanging out and just reading and meeting each other. And then on the other side where you have the food service, they define sort of destination places of high sociability in the building. The acrylic pieces, there is one that's the longer piece downstairs. There was a playfulness in it and there's an excitement in it. Very simple lines, curved, straight lines, diagonal lines. And the color is non-judgmental. It's simply primaries and secondaries. These are processed colors. So red, yellow, blue, orange, green, purple, and black and white. And that's all that, that the palette is. And then the piece that's on the other side that are the squares. And it's a revisiting of his sim very simple codex of lines in four directions vertical, horizontal, diagonal right, diagonal left, and that is simply the permutations of each square is a division broken down into two directions, and then working again with red, yellow, and blue, orange, green, and purple, saying I have lines, four directions, I've got six colors, I can make all these variants out of it, and each one has a visual statement that it makes very clearly and concisely. Ted Snyder, what was interesting, to me as a dean is he felt that he wanted his school of management students and faculty to be more integrated in terms of the things that surrounded them than just business practice and business theory. He wanted to be a part of a university that had a great commitment to art and for his students and guests and faculty to be able to live with it day in and day out.